Much like Maya, when working in Blender, it's possible to add shaders to your geometry. But you can also do vertex painting, or a combination of the two, and use those for rendering. Uh, unlike Maya, it's a little more complicated to actually get it to render those colors. So, uh, but it is pretty easy to make it possible to render them without creating a whole bunch of extra shaders. You can actually just work with one material, the default material. So this cube already has a material applied. And as you can see when you render it, it pretty much comes up as a white cube, as you can see in this little render preview. But if I wanted to add color to it, I could simply go to <coughs> data for the shape. And under vertex, uh, under color attributes, I can click plus and then choose a color to apply to the surface. Now, once I do that, we get a little indicator of the color that's been applied, but we don't see anything on screen. To actually see it on screen, you need to actually go to your shading. And under shading, you want to choose, under color, choose attribute. And it'll basically show you the color being applied to the surface. Now, if you want to, you can just build an entire model, build out multiple pieces, and assign individual colors. But you can also use vertex painting. And it's fairly simple to do so. With the geometry selected, switch to vertex paint. Under vertex paint you can choose your brush. You can change the style of the brush as well. Uh, the type of mixing and painting for different layer types or even blending. Uh, you can change the brush itself, apply textures to it, so on and so forth. I'm just going to work with the default right now and I'll just show you. You can just click and it'll apply a color relative to the vertex on the surface. If you want more detail, if you look at this geometry, it only has a certain number of vertices, a very limited number. To increase the level of detail when you're painting, you actually need to subdivide the mesh. And so what you can do is select the geometry. You could go into edit mode, select faces, and then just go to subdivide. And for the subdivide settings, instead of doing it multiple times, you can just increase the value until you have the number of vertices that you feel is going to be useful to you. Once you have those in place, you can go back to vertex paint. And then when you're painting, you can paint more precisely depending on the number of vertices you have. And also, even for getting these little splotchy things, and you don't want to add too many vertices, you just want to add a little bit of color and a little bit of variation, you can come in and use your other tools, like blur, to blur out these edges to sort of blend things together. And of course, you can add as many colors as you want. Select your brush, you can right click, or the geometry, choose a different color, and continue to paint. Now another thing you can do as well, you can actually select specific vertices. For example, I'll just select, drag select the, that cluster, and you can choose a color when you're in paint mode. Let's say I'll choose black, and then tell it to paint and set vertex color which is control X on your keyboard. And then once you disable the vertex selection, you can come back in and start using your other tools to clean things up a bit if you need to do so. I'm just gonna blur this edge. Okay. Now, of course, if you actually want to be able to render this, because right now it's just something you can just see in the viewport. If I go to the preview for some of the render modes, you can see it just turns white because that's the color of the material that's applied to it. But if you want to actually see your vertex painting on the surface, there's a couple things you have to do. First, you want to switch or open up a panel and switch it to Shader Editor. Under Shader Editor, when you have the geometry selected, it will actually show you the shader that's currently applied to that surface. 
and that's the default material. Now, to actually get it to display what we're seeing here on the regular geometry, when we're previewing it, you need to be selected in what's called attribute mode. By default, it's in material mode, and it'll show like this, even if you have vertex paint on it. But in attribute mode, it shows it as a painted object. Of course, that doesn't show when it's rendering. To get it to show that when it's going to render, you need to have the geometry selected so it actually pops, populates the shader. And then under the shader editor, you want to add a node. So you can do Shift A, and then you can just type color so we can get the nodes with color in them. And we want input attributes color, you want the input color attribute. Drop that in place and then link color to base color. Once done, whatever you've added to the attribute, color attributes, will then be displayed and rendered as well. And just to show you, we can do to render, I'll say render image, and as you can see it's rendering as well. Now another thing to keep in mind is that you can apply multiple colors to multiple objects while still all having the same material applied by using color attributes and vertex painting. That way you never have to create an entire library of materials. What you can do is you can create different materials for different visual, different surface types, but you could still have a very limited number of materials on many, many objects and to keep your scene light and simple. So for example, if I created a, let's say I create a sphere. Create a sphere. Now as you can see, the sphere comes in as its default white. And that's because I haven't done any vertex painting on this and I haven't assigned the attribute colors. So it's using its default shading. Okay. So if I wanted to come into this one and add a completely different color set or material type, I can just create a new material and make certain adjustments to this material so that it maybe will display a little different. Maybe you make it more metallic, decrease my roughness some, or increase it, depending on what sort of visual effect you want to achieve with the overall surface type. And of course with this one, just like the other, if you want it to be a smoother surface, you can simply subdivide the surface or even apply a general shader. And of course you can subdivide it here so you can uh, have more control when you're doing vertex painting. If you don't need that control, you could also just simply apply a modifier to it. But of course your painting is still going to be limited based on the surface vertices. Now another trip I, trick I've actually found that's very useful to keep me from making too many subdivisions, but it does increase the memory usage, is you can activate Shade Auto Smooth on the geometry. So select the geometry, right click on it and say Shade Auto Smooth, and it'll smooth out some of those, those facets that usually dip, uh, display on the surface when you don't have a lot of uh, faces on the surface. It helps to keep, the, keep it visually cleaner. Now, even though I have this, I can come in and notice I can I select the two different objects because now they each have a separate material. I get a different set of nodes. And I can do the same thing with the sphere. I can come in, I can add my color attribute node and then connect color to base color. And as you can see, base color comes in and turns black. And that's because I have no attribute color attributes assigned to it. You usually want at least one assigned there to control the color in most cases if it's going to do this. Especially now it's trying to render based on uh, the material type being more reflective and metal, metallic, things like that. So it's affecting how it actually comes out there. So you usually want to add some sort of a color there as well. So if I, of course we can come in and make changes to that material to affect our surface. And notice it's only affecting the sphere, not the cube. 